Okay. Awesome. Well, hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. I'm back at it again. Yeah. Um, this is my really good friend. Um, well, what should I call you? Mike or Anthony? Well, um, a lot of people call me professionally Anthony, but since okay. you know me since college, it's Michael. <laughs> so if you want to call yeah. me Michael, that's fine. I have people that call me Anthony. I have people that call me Michael. Some people call me Anthony Michael. So. Gotcha. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I'm now like kind of like in that that weird space too. People are like, okay, well, what should I call you? Like, should I call you my first name or middle name? I'm like, hey, I have two. I respond to you to, to both. So, I mean, if you feel like it fits, if you feel like I'm being D that moment, then call me D. If you feel like I'm being Ego, I'll take that too. Whatever. One of the same. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, it depends who it is and like, like how I introduce myself to them. I always introduce myself as Anthony, but Given well, with my husband, he calls me Michael. So whoever it depends. Okay. Well, for the sake <laughs> of argument, you can call me you. You can call me Michael since that's where you know me. <laughs> cool. Well, for the sake of today's talk, I will call you Michael because I know they, you know that's how I know you. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah. So thank you again for joining me today. You know, I was just you know I'm coming from a spirit of you know I want to show support um to my friends and my um, family members that I know have like that business minded um, mindset and have their own businesses working for them. Um, and I know that you do, um, and I wanted to know more, you know, about your acting studio because I know you've been working on it for a really long time. Um, I just don't know all the like ins and outs. Like what was your process? Like, <laughs> tell me more about your acting studio. I want to know. All right. Um, so it's um, technically, it's an audition studio. It's a subgroup up because you have a lot of acting studios. Okay. But what I specifically focuses on is audition technique for colleges. Um, mm. I've been a teacher for almost 10 years now, and I've worked with high school students. And these high school students tend to be unorganized and misguided. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's, I guess that's true for a lot of people, but right. specifically when they're applying for colleges. Um, I remember being in that position of, applying for colleges and not knowing what colleges to choose based on my um, interest. My interest was always to be an actor since high school and get into a program that offers that. But a lot of the schools offers acting, but not a lot of schools offer acting that, that showcase or reflects on my opinion of what it is to be an actor. Um, and when I'm working with my clients, I'm looking for what is that, let me see, that, that connection that they have between the school and them, right? Because not all schools are the same, not all colleges are the same. So you need to figure out who you are and which college re, uh, will kind of best reflect that. And I find that a lot of our students are geared to community colleges because that's the easy route or they're geared to schools because it's a way from the, because that's all they know. But they're not, a lot of the guidance counselors, they're no fault to their own. They have a big caseload of over 300 students um, to understand the, the specific needs that you need in order to audition for a performing arts college. And, it's, and this is where I come in. I come in, I am the one that helps the students figure out what colleges they want what uh, what 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 requirements they need in order to get into that college, um, and pick out materials like audition pieces, monologues that the colleges want to see, and like and coaching them through that basically. Wow. So I coach them through that whole package of what the college needs specifically for that college. Every college has a different <laughs> has a different <laughs> requirement, and it's a lot of work. And it's a lot of work to put on the parent. It's a lot of work to put on the student because a lot of my students are working solo because the parents have no idea what's going on. They just right. doing the best that they can. And I work with primarily um, Latino and black students. And that's okay. my, that's my, that's my crew. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta help our people but, out, you know, let them know what and things are out there, you know, because if you don't talk about yeah, it, yeah. no one's going to know. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty cool so, yeah. though. Mm -hmm. So that's, so, I yes. feel like it's kind of like a, a bridge or like from the description you're giving me is like from like a bridge of like high school to college, but like for the acting world. 
Yeah, basically, yeah, to put it in layman's terms. It's, um, yeah, yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> it's exactly <laughs> that's that. Really it's, cool. it's, yeah, so, like, so I'm working, is, yeah. So I'm sorry, sorry. so what does like a, uh, an acting school actually look for in a monologue? Because I didn't even, I didn't really stop to think that there would be like an acting process to it. Like, because you know how like, if we're going to go to med school, you kind of know what that track is like. But to be an actor, mm -hmm. you don't think, or at least... I'm just like, okay, yeah, I know people train and stuff, but like you go on a hope and a prayer, like, yes, I made it, I'm an actor. <laughs> Usually it's a two minute monologue from a contemporary piece, contemporary meaning anything from the 1950s to now. Um, something from Shakespearean time as well, a classic, um, two minutes. And then um, it's drama and comedy. And they also have to be two minutes. So depending on the college. So one college would say, give me a two minute monologue um, that reflects contemporary time. So the student has to pick a monologue that does that. Uh, give me a, a, com a comedic monologue, a classic comedic monologue. Another college might say, give me a musical piece that from a classic musical piece that I need for, um, for that audition. Yeah, so it really depends on it depends on the college. Okay, and how many colleges are you are are you affiliated with, or do you work like directly with? I'm not affiliated, not yet. I'm not affiliated specifically to one college. I work with different colleges, and I'm still building that relationship because I've only been doing this for two years out okay. of the gate. Um, so it's still I'm. I'm still a baby in those terms when it comes to <laughs> having a business because the startups are like ridiculously hard. And I'm learning that every single day, like every day there's something new. Yeah. And then, <laughs> um, and relationships are important. So right now I'm building those relationships um, to help my students. So I've gotten a few students into different programs in which they don't need to audition Okay. Um, I think I had to find more success that way, um, but finding the right program for them um, that kind of balances academics and the theater. Um, but I also had students that auditioned for different programs in which they got in um, based on that, um, like N um, NYU, um, Brooklyn College and those. Very nice. But why start the acting studio? Because I remember like, because I thought you were going to like get into um like uh, stage design because you make some really wicked like Halloween costumes. Like I'm telling you, this man was Freddy Krueger one one year, and I was I I was convinced he bought that mask. No, he made it. I don't know how, but like the effects were crazy. So like, how did you get into like the auditioning studio part? Like, what about it was like ah, this is a market I need to get into. Well, I was looking, it was just being a teacher. That's where it kind of dawned on me. I was like, these students are not getting what they need. So, and there is a market for it. So I look at it as a business perspective. It's like, I can have an acting studio and teach acting classes, but there are so many of those. There are not that many schools that specializes in um, audition, um, audition help for the colleges okay. and gearing you for that. There are some that does it kind of along with their acting program, but I, my niche, my core group is auditioners, learning how to audition for colleges, learning how to pick the right college, learning how to pick the right material for that. Um, because I was that student that didn't get that help. So I kind of lost, I was lost in a way and we, I felt like I lost a lot of time just trying to figure my way in college, what I wanted and how to get what I want. Um, and, I, and then I'm seeing my students experience that as well. So I was like, this, somebody has to do it. So I'm not waiting for someone to do it for them. I did it myself. <laughs> and, um, and, and talking about the whole design things, it was um, in college, I was a theater major. So you learned all, everything that has to do with theater. Mm -hmm. You learn costume, makeup, you learn acting, of course. You learn all those things. So I always got interested in costume and makeup, and that was my concentration in college. And that was, I was gonna be in that when I grow up, but acting is what caused me. I like to be on stage, I like to act. So I am still a working actor, and that's what I do. 
Yes, can't wait to see you like on broad. <laughs> yes, yes, I knew him when <laughs> before he was a star. <laughs> yes, let's see. Yeah, my my goal is to be a consistent working actor. Broadway yeah. is like whatever. <laughs> so you will. I have total faith in you. <laughs> That's awesome. So, like, what would you want your legacy to be? Like, do you have an idea of what that looks like yet? Mm. Right now, I don't know what it is. And I'm okay with that. I Because a lot of times we go in, I feel like we go into this as like, oh, this is the mark I want to leave. And this is where I'm going to work towards that mark. And then when you get that mark, it's like, oh, was it that fun to begin with? So right now I'm in a position of like, I'm trying to figure that out. Let the mark happen on itself rather than me just drive for that mark. I think it's like, if you work towards um, what you believe in, the mark is gonna be there and it's gonna stay there. It's like, you don't need to write down, I wanna leave. It's, it's gonna be there. Like, do the job, do the work, show up, and you're gonna have that mark. I agree. I agree. Like I was telling my niece the other day, because funny enough, she's, she's, um, they're putting on a play at school and they're doing Moana. So the, watched, your younger niece. Yeah. Um, my yeah. oldest one, she's 13 now. The oldest one. Oh my God. So, yeah. <laughs> like, Grown woman. <laughs> Listen, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe this Maddie. So she, she, she was a little upset, you know, that she was like the right claw to the giant crab mm -hmm. um so she's like i don't know what i'm supposed to do i'm like it doesn't matter you know what it is you know people remember you know how you respond to things have fun remember it's just pretend and just be the best right claw you're gonna be on a giant <laughs> yeah. crab and everyone's gonna remember that yeah, of course. And she was like, but I'm the right claw. And I'm like, you're gonna still be the greatest. You're gonna be the right? you're gonna be the best right claw. And that's it. I'm like, because people remember how you handled it, you know? It doesn't yeah. matter if you have a line or not, they just remember how you responded and how you, you know, flipped it around. I'm like, remember that old saying when you what is it? If you have lemonade, if you have lemons, turn it into lemonade. I'm like, this is your lemonade, girl. Okay. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm those type. I'm I'm that type of actor that I don't mind being the right claw. I don't mind being that tree. I don't mind being part of the ensemble because that's what it's all about. I have more fun being part of that than I do being front and center. Like mm -hmm. I'm, as much as this sounds crazy, people think actors love to be front and center, but it's not true. I don't like to be front and center. I mean, I love to tell a story. I like to be there and tell that story, but to be front and center all the time when people are looking at you it's the scariest stuff that you can experience yeah i almost cursed i don't know if you could curse on this <laughs> <laughs> well i'm not paying anybody so it's okay it's fine, but yeah it's fine <laughs> we'll keep it we'll keep it pg we can't yeah. keep it pg-13 because they'd be cursing pg-13 we'll true. keep it pg <laughs> yes i'm like well, these kids these days they're a lot younger more advanced enough so they know things are adults i'd be like child me. <laughs> like now you're making me oh now <laughs> <laughs> that that's cool well, i'm like so happy to hear that like that's just that's so nice you know I'm, I'm i'm really glad to see that you're doing well and you're doing things you know that you know you probably didn't even imagine like that's awesome like i don't no, know many yeah. people that even have it an audition studio like that is that's cool it's different and i like different you know yeah it's um there are there are other audition studios out there that that's that specializes in college auditions okay. um and there's college audition coaches and there's there's a there's an industry for it. it's a small is a we call it like a college uh cottage industry okay. which is a small industry within an industry and um it's growing but i find the ones that are popular and are doing well they tend to be for those that already have advantages like okay. the, you know, um, I don't want to say white people, but white people. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? That's good. laughs> All right. So they have, <laughs> they have those advantages and they get even more advantages from these programs because they can't afford it. My, mm -hmm. I work on a scaling um, scale, 
um, between price points, depending on how much the student can pay. If a student comes up to me, it was like, I really can't pay for this. Then we work something out. Like I'm okay. willing to work that out. Okay. I'm not, at least for like for this business right now, I'm not looking to make a lot of money. I'm looking for money that would sustain the business and sustain my students where okay. I'm not losing money in, in order to operate. Obviously it's, it is a business and at the end of the day, I need to make the money in order to make sure that's operating. But uh, my primary focus is not to get rich off of this because you, you won't, it's, right. <laughs> you won't. <laughs> I mean, but it sets me up in a financial sense in which it's another income that's coming in. It's another stream of income. Yeah. Like I don't use it as a, I'm still a teacher. Uh, I teach and I, that's one income. Um, I'm investing in real estate. That's another income. So it's all these different streams coming in for, but my passion is teaching. My passion is uh, this studio um, okay. because I want to help my students. I want to make sure that they get the best that they can to get into the trainings. And a lot of trainings are, are not reflective of who they are. Um, and I've met a lot of people, a lot of Latinos and uh, black people that go through these trainings and they, the work that they do is not reflective of who they are because they chose the wrong college. They only chose the college because of its name um, or because of its prestige. But they're not catering to you. They're catering to the masses that go there, which are, um, people people um white people right they're not catering to us and whatever work they give us is usually work that is stereotypical work that is um um that is only august wilson and <laughs> august wilson is a famous playwright that wrote the, about the black experience okay. and they would use that as a lynching point but they don't go deeper there's so many other cu um, current writers that go deeper and talk about our experience as um, human beings and bringing that on stage and um yeah and it and it, it's a it's a revamping so i'm part of like i don't want to say i guess a crusade to kind of get more of our people within those trainings and see it's like we are here we have a story to tell and we're here to enrich to enrich the program not to be a supplement to the program or be a photo op to the program I'm here right. to bring my experience and my expertise as a person of color and bringing it into this space. And I'm owning this space. I'm making, and I'm making this space known that it's mine and that I belong. Not that I'm not here because of X, Y, and Z. Right. And a lot of colleges in the city have that same philosophy. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they have a larger body of, um, people of color that are in the arts specifically acting other colleges not so much because it just depends on the town depending on what it go um depending on on the population of people within that town right. but if you stay in a city it's private colleges um community colleges that um focuses on act um acting very cool well, you know, I thank you for yeah. trying to like for paving the way and creating a space where we're more represented in a positive light. You know, I know that's also mm -hmm. like I hear um, that, you know, and, you know, the, the, the celebrity world, the Emmys and, and, and whatnot, mm -hmm. that they're always trying to revamp to get, you know, other different versions of our stories out there because we all are used to the one, <laughs> you know, where it's either, you know, we're either the Huxtables or, you know, we're like baby boy, you know, yeah, and exactly. so like, <laughs> like, it's like, no, you know, why it's not nuanced. To another? <laughs> exactly. And it's like, you know, like there's, there's a variety. So, you know, thank mm -hmm. you for, you know, adding to our world in that way and creating that space. Um, have you ever thought of like writing or anything to add to your repertoire? <laughs> So many things. Um, I do write, but it's not anything of, it's like I write in my journal. I write, I'm like writing a memoir, like, um, and I write plays, but I too scared to take that leap <laughs> to actually publish it because I don't think it's good enough. And that's just my, something I'm working on. It was like, of course I'm good enough. Like, yes. I'm here. <laughs> yes, exactly. Like, you have a whole, like, studio, like, you're passionate about it. You can totally do that. 
And I am totally going to encourage you that, encourage you to <laughs> go ahead and do it. Like, forget the fear, because so long as we allow the fear to stay there, we're never going to actually live up to our own potential. You know, we need to remove the, all the what ifs and just do it. Like, the only way we truly know is by doing it. You know, we have one life. Make it, you know, what you want. And just go hard or go home, you know? Yeah. So don't and it's it. not... Yeah, I know. I know. It's, it's, it's really weird, because I'm... It's, when it comes to everything else, I'm not afraid to try it. But when it comes to writing, for some reason, there's something there. Just because I I've, I've read so many I've read so many pieces that were so good, I was like, I can't write like them. I can't express myself like them. Um, and I'm talking specifically Afro Latino writers. I'm like, they're fucking good. They could they capture like our experience like to the T. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not there yet, so I think I need more practice in like finding my own voice in that. And I think finding that voice is what's the scary part because I might be afraid of what I have to say is not as is already been said or is not as important anymore. So no, I mean, your experience is your experience. There's always going to be mm-hmm. somebody that's going to identify with you somewhere out there. It's not always, it may not always be like a read, uh, immediate reaction, but mm-hmm. you know, someone will always relate to it, whether it's five minutes, two minutes, like mm-hmm. we're all human. You know, we all want the basic love and to fit in and to just be accepted for who we are, you know? So mm-hmm. your voice is good. Um, and there's somebody out there that's listening. That's like, yes, I see myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I see it. So yeah. how, do, um, how do students get in contact with you? How can um, they get in touch with you so you can be, you know, so you can help them with their auditioning skills? What's that process? Yeah, so, um, yeah they can go to my website. I have a website, ampauditionstudio.com. Um, it's A as in Apple, M as in Michael, P as in Peter. <laughs> and then <laughs> auditionstudio.com. <laughs> mm. And there, there's a breakdown of all the information. Um, just email me. Um, also, you can email me at contact at ampauditionstudios.com. Um, and you can email me and say that I'm interested in the studios. I'm interested in what you have to say. Can we talk? And then once they contact me, I'll send them a form because I like to know my clients um, as one um, before we start anything, just so okay. I'm better equipped to know what their pain points are to know what challenges they have in order for me to best serve them. Maybe I'm not the best person to serve them. Maybe they're looking for something a little bit more specific or a little bit more general, who knows? Okay. But I want to know that before we start audition, before we even start the actual work. I want to know who you are, what you're about, what you want. That one way to get there (laughs) (laughs) that's awesome so do you have like for anybody that's out there that either wants to start an audition studio or is just like thinking about you know becoming an entrepreneur or starting that idea that they had in their mind do you have like any words of inspiration or any you know pay it forward words that you would you know like to share with um anybody that's listening any words of encouragement just start (laughs) <laughs> just start <laughs> it's it's <laughs> you get stuck I got <laughs> yeah it's, it's like sometimes we get in this planning phase of like how it's going to be and how it should look and sometimes we don't even get to that point we don't even plan we think we talk about it especially like our friends we talk about it, it's like oh I want this I want that and they don't even start the planning process and sometimes you get stuck in the planning process and you don't continue to the next step and just start move start and move <laughs> that's true you know and I mean, there's gonna like, be lots of things that are gonna get in the way um and you know the the truest testament is how you handle those those hurdles and you overcoming them you know it's just yeah. gonna make you stronger in the long run so i totally agree totally totally agree and then what have what are your biggest lessons that you've had so far things don't need to be perfect um, mm. they, I find when uh, I wanted it to be perfect, there was I, I had some insecurity or something. It comes from uh, 
I think perfection comes from insecurity. Some kind of insecurity you have, yeah. it's what's stopping you from continuing. And, I, and I've learned, just do it. Like it doesn't have to be perfect. Especially now we are, we are currently more forgiving, especially with COVID happening, how things right, are yeah. presented. People are more forgiving in how it's presented and seems like, oh, this person is trying to do their thing. I'm gonna, I support that. I support this person that's trying to do something. Like they don't support people that are trying to look perfect and be this, this imaginary thing. Like people see through that. <laughs> so they don't support that, but they support the person that's trying their asses and they're trying again. Yeah. We have more support towards that than not. Yes. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much. It was so much fun catching up with you and talking to you. Um, again, I'm so proud of you. And if there's anything that I can do to help support you anymore, please don't hesitate um, to let me know. And again, like... Yeah, you got to let me know how I can support you too. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you're right. You're we right. We help I've out been... each other. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Let's help each other. It's not one way. You let me know I what know. you need. I'm going to help out as much as I can. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I just, I, throughout this whole thing, I just kind of like forgot about myself, like in this whole process. I'm like, it's not about me. It's about the people. I want the people to hear about my friends that I think are so great. Um, Which is great. Yeah, yeah. My life. So I'm like, hey, you know, this is not about me. It's about the people. I am the people. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, again, it was so good to see you. I can't wait to see, you know, what else you have in store for us. Um, and again, thank you for being, I mean, you're, I may as well just call you now. You're an essential worker now, you know, because you're, <laughs> you're a teacher um no one knows you know what covid has in store for us but you're definitely at the forefront of it and we definitely i know i appreciate um you know all the things that you do for our youth because as you said they're misguided and with us we can help with that guidance um and you're and you're dealing with the kids so thank you for being a voice thank you for being a teacher um we appreciate you we know that it's a it's a job that doesn't you know get as much recognition as it should um, but you guys have a hard job, you know, people aren't easy and other people's kids aren't easy. You know, being a teacher is hard. Um, mm -hmm. So I think for <laughs> you. And yeah, do you have any other um, parting words that you want to you wanna share with anybody? Yeah, be true to yourself and move on, continue and start, start wherever you are. Be true to yeah. yourself and start. <laughs> awesome. Yes, yes, yes. Well, if you're in need of an audition coach, please see Mr. Anthony Michael Palmer. He is one of the best that I know. Um, and yeah, check him out. You're on Facebook and Instagram, right? Or AMP Audition Studio. I'm sorry, AMP Audition Studios.com. <laughs> find him on Facebook and on Instagram. Yes, with the same name. Yes. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody.